Caddis Maximus here, this time with uh, Weaver's 2000 watt variable AC transformer. Commonly known as a Variac, although that's a particular product name. I believe by SE Electronics, an old American manufacturer of these variable AC transformers, but they've all colloquially been known as those. These things are getting surprisingly cheap. Weaver did send this to me as a free product. Actually, I haven't heard from them for a couple months, and I thought they were done with me, but they actually sent me a few, uh, a few different options. And I've actually been wanting a kind of a bigger, more beater style, Variac, specifically for use with power tools. They're not very common anymore, but uh, they're useful enough in a variety of different applications such as for me with power tools, people working with vintage audio equipment, people who are still developing, uh, working with traditional chemical films, they'll use these to really precisely tune the exact brightness of uh, development or enlargers and the lights that they use. And electrical testing, when you have like little switching power supplies, computers, cell phone chargers often advertise 100 to 220 volts input, so you can set this down to 100 volts output and that's I'm not going to totally open it up but how they work is they just have what looks like a big toroidal transformer in it and then instead of being a fixed ratio what you have is you have this knob and then there's this little wiper carbon brush they sand the tops of the coils and as that carbon brush transitions over the tops of the coils it's changing the ratio of the transformer from basically zero all the way up to a little bit over, in this case 130 volts. Some more laboratory grade ones will go higher, 140, 150 volts. 20 amp rated, 20 amp fuse with, and I guess an additional push button circuit breaker. Some of these have digital displays and they're actually not particularly accurate, but I was noticing on this one that this analog display, if I, we'll do that right here live. If I get this right, at 110 volts and I look oh my lighting sucks we look at my knob here maybe if I do it this way it's just about at 110 volts and if we go up to 120 here I thought this red mark was 120 no that's 150 so the gauge goes way higher than what this unit will do Anyway, I was finding that the gauge and the knob are more than close enough. These things, uh, you know, you can always measure them with a multimeter and double and really just adjust this knob to where it's really accurate along these numbers, and it was just fine. This one's a little weird because the knob sticks way off the top, but I think they're actually doing that for additional cooling. Most of the knobs are flush. Don't pick it up by the knob. Pick it up by the housing they even have bigger units 3000 watt but they have they're for you know kind of specialty testing of heater coils and that type of stuff and they don't have normal plugs the 20 amp is about as big with as you can get with normal plugs so besides the specialty you know tube audio equipment applications and certain electronic testing applications you never will want to use one of these with electronics anything digital don't ever plug your computers, receivers, all that kind of stuff into it because those, <laughs> I should say, electronics involving transistors are designed to operate at their nominal voltages. And when you run too low of a voltage, all sorts of things, switching power supplies end up trying to draw tons of current in order to achieve their specified output DC voltages. And that can burn up components because you have way too low a power if you try to run them at 60 volts or something. So you need to be real careful that it needs to really be analog electronics. The big deal about one of these versus, say, you know, the variable speed that's on a variable speed drill or something or those cheesy little router speed controllers that you can get from Harbor Freight is those use uh, something called a triac, which kind of chops up the AC form. And alternating current is just a nice wave. Uh, things like variable speed triggers on drills, it kind of cuts off the wave, so the wave goes up and then cuts off sharply, where this is just reducing the voltage but still maintaining a nice smooth sine wave. And this thing, 
on Amazon shipped was like fifty five dollars. I mean, it was. A, it is such a good price that as long as it works, it's not a big deal. That's not you know a three hundred dollar pro unit. So the biggest deal is people use these as a router speed controllers. They're not as good as you know if you get a really nice router with a built in. Uh, variable speed it'll actually have a sensor for feedback and it'll be constant power this won't doesn't give you load based feedback but what it does do is give you extremely fine control so if you have old power tools or non variable speed routers that's one of the great things about one of these and a cheap one is you don't have to worry so much about it being in the shop getting dinged or carried around the advantage you get is just really smooth speed control so we'll turn this on Lock the trigger, did pick up this Bosch 68 old US made 1618 router. And actually maybe I can just show it here. But we can get this the absolute finest control with one of these. I can just barely make a turn. Obviously, we're not gonna once it starts moving, we can turn it down. This is a router that moves at 26,000 RPM at full speed. And you can just get it tuned exactly right. You do a test cut to see how much it bogs down because since it isn't load based, you'd have to have it turned up a little bit higher under free wheel. So when you engage the cut, it's at the right speed. But if you just want to have a certain velocity or Maybe you're working with some materials that burn easily or something like that. It's really the way to go because it's really nice for the motor because it's getting just a nice smooth AC signal or a sine wave. Tool runs smoother, actually generates a little bit less heat. So that's one of the biggest deals for, I mean, how cheap it is. Some of those little electronic router speed controllers are 50 bucks. So might as well get a full blown Variac. They give you a whole bunch of fuses the fuses, I think these are more fast blow fuses. So what happens is normally the fuse will pop, but if for some reason you put in one that's too big or something, they just have this as a backup. Another thing for me is testing. For me, it's all about using it with power tools. And many times there'll be routers you want to control. Every once in a while, there may be a type of cut that you're doing and a certain type of material that you just want to go slow. And things like, you know, variable speed skill saw they never made one but you can use one of these and this 20 amp will have more than enough power you went you know running the skill saw full power under a deep cut can pull more than 15 amps but you wouldn't have it plugged into a very act if you're just doing normal full power cuts this is an advantage for two reasons one is I can run a saw like this at a slower speed and just hear if there's any cyclical sounds, any kind of, you know, issues with the bearings or anything. And once again, there just may be a certain situation where say this is just about the right speed. Maybe you're cutting some brittle plastic material or something like that. You're going real slow and you want to just have a slower, really controlled cut, but have like the mass of a big saw, which reduces vibration and reduces the likelihood of being pushed around by uh, varying density of the material that you're cutting you can use it with a big very and that's just one of the many applications that uh, makes these things so neat particularly large ones like this 20 amp where you can actually plug real power to tools into it and, and get away with using it like that so anyway, I'm glad uh, Beaver sent me this as a promotional product. I don't receive any compensation otherwise, as I've said in my all my other Beaver videos. But that's why I titled this the Ultimate Router Speed Controller is Variax R, because they maintain that smooth AC waveform. And that's actually a advantage to these cheaper ones like from Beaver. I'll have a link in the description is 20 amps will pretty much take care of all portable power tools. The biggest those tend to get is 15 amps. Very rare to have something stronger than that. 
and because of the unbelievable simplicity, it's still a decent device. It's not something you want to drop, but it's, you know, at less than $60. <laughs> it's actually competitive with much worse router speed controllers. This offers ultimate smoothness and is super fine control. And you just won't be heartbroken if it somehow gets beat up or left outside or who knows what. Or just being around the shop and getting kind of dinged up. You know, if you buy an expensive one, you want to take care of it. And if you buy one like this, you're like, okay, it's not a problem if it gets a dent in it. And I'll actually put a lot of effort into using it. Or I will use it more often just because it's, uh, I'm not so worried about damaging it. Criticism, not a great, not really any strain relief. It's just a grommet through the metal here, so that might have to be upgraded if you're actually dragging around a bunch. Other criticism, 20 amps. I mean, they really are talking IA at 20 amps. Actually, I think we even have a label in the back. But it has a 14 gauge. Let's see what we have here. Oh, that is some tiny print. God, I can barely even read that. Oh well, <laughs> I'll read it later. But it came with a 14 gauge cord, which is a bit thin for a 20 amp tool. It really should have been uh, a 12 gauge cord. And if you're somebody who's actually running it near those current levels, I don't know if you have big halogen shop lights that you maybe have plugged into it or have multiple power tools that you're running at the same time that's what i worry about i double check the cord and see if it's getting too warm and if it is then it's going to take pulling out this power cord putting in you know a 12 gauge one like buying a very short 12 gauge extension cord and cutting it off to use as a power cord actually i think you can get 12 gauge replacement tool cords at places like home depot and you may want to upgrade that if you're running into it running into issues with this cord heating up because you're running it so hard and really appreciate everybody's been watching and i've just noticed some chinese english here regulate tour don't know where they got that e from but it's always hilarious when they have those kind of misspellings on these products but this thing is just so cheap uh it's actually even kind of surprising because the quality they could easily get a hundred bucks for a 20 amp variac um and they're just selling it for dirt, dirt cheap. Even has a little tag for you to hook up an alternative ground, which is something nice. The old school Variax are only two prong. This one at least is set up with a grounded chassis. So a little bit of extra safety there. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.